Hello, and welcome back to the Silicon Nubian YouTube channel, where we're all about things tech. Continuing in our series, 10 Minutes with Linux, where we kick the tires of Linux distributions, today we're going to take a look at one that's been available in the wild for over 10 years, Netrunner, version 20. So Netrunner 20, celebrating 10 years of Netrunner in the wild. Well, go figure. Netrunner has gone through a number of different iterations, from being based on Manjiro Linux, uh, being based on Ubuntu, but now they settled down to a distribution that is Debian based and it features a very highly customized KDE desktop with lots of extra applications. Multimedia codecs do come as part of the mix as well as Flash and Java plugins and once again a unique look and feel. So Netrunner, the developers have focused on a distribution that from the get-go will allow you to become productive uh, and in an environment that is very pleasing to the eye. So let's get started and take a quick look at Netrunner 20. This is the desktop right after installation and as usual what we have done is we've updated to the, all the latest updates uh, just at the prior to filming this video. So that this is the, the default desktop as we see we have three icons on the top definitely KDE-ISC which it is and we have a very interesting looking desktop. I myself don't really like the look of the wallpaper, but then again, it's just like paint in a house that can be changed very quickly. We can go to configure desktop. We can easily change uh, our type of wallpaper, not in real time, but very smooth in how it's done. <clears throat> so we can change that quickly. Linux is so configurable, you've got to love it. So let's continue. So we have a readme, which pops up a link to a URL with uh, the Netrunner README and uh, this introduction and tell you also they include links to tutorials and whatnot. We can see right away that Firefox is the default web browser, no problem there. Uh, we have, we can go to our network using the file manager which is Dolphin for those who are very much into version numbers. As of the posting of this video, it's using Dolphin 18.08.0. Uh, Dolphin, another very capable uh, uh, file manager, nothing to see here except that it works very, very well. And of course, my computer <clears throat> gives you system information, shows the uh, KDE Plasma version. We are running version 5.14, 5.14.5, KDE Apps version, Frameworks, Qt version, what processor we're running on, and a few other things uh, if you're interested in all of that. So let's right click on the desktop and see what we get. We have our dialog box that pops up. You can refresh. We can add widgets with KDE and with a few other um, GUIs, uh, graphic user interfaces. We can add different widgets to the desktop, such as clocks, uh, analog clock, for example, activity pager and whatnot. Uh, I like to um, add a few things when I see fit, but mm, it depends. I can add two, I can add three, I can remove them if I want, I can add four. It can become very cluttered. It just depends on your what you consider to be uh, your taste. I like having an analog clock. I would configure it and I would move it to the corner here. And of course we have a notification bars that pop up over here to tell us what we're doing. Once again, KDE does have a lot of features which you won't see on a lot of other graphic user interfaces whether you like them or not but they do come with a with a hit with respect respect to memory usage and whatnot uh, but not that great um, in terms of a hit so let's continue sorry for the pop-up here uh, we also have our configured desktop which we looked at uh, we can change our wallpaper deal with mouse actions our location we can uh, change the icon themes and there's more also tweets we can show the desktop toolbox uh, widget handling and whatnot. Let's go down to the menu bar. We have our panel. It's called a panel. We can have our panel options. We can add widgets. We can lock widgets. Once again, we can configure the task manager. Again, a lot of configuration options. A lot. Uh, you can go through it for, we can have a whole video just on configuring KDE 5, <clears throat> but it's it's quite extensive in what you can do. Uh, if we continue even more on the right side, we have a quick where we can enter in. We have a CLI that pumps up a command line interface and we can enter in commands very quickly. I like that. Uh, we have 
our uh, spectacle. We can capture uh, full screen, part of the screen. So basically a screen capture um, where we can take screenshots, put it in the clipboard, we can export them and whatnot. Pretty interesting. Here we have, of course, our... Uh, we can manage our levels of our microphone, for example, our speakers. And if I right click on it, that was left click and right click, we can pop up our pulse audio controller, also mixer, audio volume settings. Uh, once again, even more settings to deal with audio volume and keyboard shortcut cuts with respect to uh, anything audio. Here we have a pop up where we have our status and notifications showing us our battery and brightness, keyboard indicator, disc quota, and whatnot. Uh, we saw those status boxes pop up as I was deleting, well, in, uh, adding and deleting those widgets. Well, they would show up here as well. Uh, here we have our network icon, and we have a wired connection. We can disconnect it. We can actually put in airport mode, We can, which is great if you have a laptop or a portable device. And we can also create uh, new connections by right-clicking, configure network, or configure networks. We can jump on there and we can ask for a pin for modem detection. There's a lot of different things. I mean, it's really a, um, I would say it's someone who likes to tinker. You found your paradise right here. Okay, so let's continue. Uh, really quick, we have our, of course, our clock with our calendar. Right clicking, we can, bring, we can adjust our time and date. We've seen that in many other applications. And here we have our history of what we've done. The wired connection was activated. It's not what we've done really, but system uh, critical or necessary system reports or system events that have happened, I should say, we can see uh, them right here. And here we can uh, change the screen edge, the height, we can add widgets again, spacers and more settings. So there's a lot we can do just on the panel. Let's go to the left. Let's take a quick look at the applications that are included. Uh, this is interesting. In uh, very GNOME-esque in terms of how the application menu comes up. Uh, if we left click, we have our application menu. So we can, from here, we can log out, reboot, shut down. And here we have our favorites. Let's show cases guard. We'll just show a little thing of what's happening here. We can see that memory usage, at least as reported by the system monitor, cases guard is quite low. Uh, KDE 5, at least KDE in general, um, from three on up was known to be one of the heavier GUIs. But uh, what I'm seeing here is we have a memory load of just under 700 megabytes. So that's pretty svelte considering all the options and other capabilities we have here. Memory management and KDE have come a long way. So let's continue here. We have system settings. We're gonna go into that. We have Synaptic Package Manager being Debian based. This is going to be how a lot of software gets installed. By the way, there is an update manager and I'll show you that in a minute. So this is Synaptic, uh, nothing much to see here. We've all seen this many times before. Love it, hate it, it's a very powerful tool. Uh, if we go to our update manager, we can see the system is up to date. We can do a refresh. We can see all the updates and they, they do have, I think, a rating of one to four or one to five. Please correct me if I'm wrong in terms of uh, how critical the updates are. Uh, continue again, we have Dolphin, we have the console. And then we have system settings. Now this is very interesting because this is very extensive. If you are a tinkerer, this is the <laughs> distribution for you. For you, we have account details, uh, language of course, we can go back, KD wallet, accessibility, online accounts, we can set them up here. <clears throat> we can create, we can add, we can delete online accounts. Plasma tweaks, for you KD fans out there, look and feel, we can change the whole look and feel of the KDE experience right here with Plasma Tweaks. <clears throat> change the desktop theme, desktop, desktop, desktop effects, please excuse me. Window decorations or splash screen, a lot of different things we can do. Workspace behavior, user manager, date and time, font settings, startup shutdown. Uh, what happens, we can run script files if necessary, startup or shutdown. We can go to our hardware, uh, the compositor, display, gamma. You see where I'm coming at. There's a lot of things here we can adjust. Uh, audio, we've seen already a few um, devices, what applications are using audio, more advanced, uh, audio and video, and different selections we have here, built-in analog stereo, preferred devices, and whatnot. Network settings are here. We've already seen some of them, but this gets even more intense. 
intense, so I said should say in depth in terms of what they're listing and what you can do. Uh, again, a tinkerer's paradise. I can say that a hundred times. Uh, network drives, we can uh, connect to network drives from here. Samba status from here for networking. Uh, we can add printers or delete printers, manage them. We have power management here on AC power battery. Again, pretty impressive, <laughs> very impressive actually. KDE Connect, connecting to different devices, a removable storage manager, what to do when different devices are attached to the system, and advanced, we have other. Okay, file search we can configure, sh window shares we can uh, get into here, we can uh, help us or with access to different window shares available on our networks. Uh, emoticons, don't know why that's there, but it's there. <laughs> Windows rules, spell check, and we have an activities tab. We can create an activity, uh, we can focus on specific tasks. So you can see that the included applications are pretty intense so far, just if, and that's our time limit, we'll be done soon, just if you look at the system settings. Now let's look at the actual applications real quick and we'll be out of here. Once again, I'm sorry we've gone over our 10 minutes. I've got to learn to keep that under control. But there's so much to see here. So we have recent documents, recent applications, all applications, but I'm gonna go through in a category, uh, categorical list as opposed to going to all applications. We have games, not much to see here, except we can see that Steam is installed by default. For graphics, we have, of course, uh, GIMP, Inkscape, Krita, Scanlight. A lot of them are KDE-specific applications. Um, Internet, Firefox, I showed that before, KDE Marvel, Pigeon, QT Transmission, Skype, Thunderbird is included, Multimedia, we have um, Handbrake, Audacious, Cheese, SM Player, Pulse Audio, Yeah Rock, a, a few applications I know and a few I don't. SM Player, very familiar with. Office, LibreOffice Suite is included by default. Uh, this is something I always look for um, because I do use the office suites on a regular basis. So this is something that's positive. Settings, of course, have different settings, system settings um, and uh, X2 VNC um, and a few other settings, uh, applications we have here that we can go into. I'm not Again, this uh, 10 minutes with Linux, which we've gone overboard, we're going to hit 12 minutes soon, is not meant to be a comprehensive look. It's meant to be more of a a post-installation, kick the tires kind of uh, look at what you can get in the application, what's in, in the distribution and what is included. System, we go with Dolphin, Info Center, lots of things here. K-Wallet is there. Synaptic, of course, we saw Update Manager. Utilities, Arc, which is an archive manager. Calc, Ocular, Focal Screen and whatnot. Sue Studio, very interesting. Uh, if you want to create your own uh, personalized version of this may be distributable if you want to carry it with you web uh, we have skype telegram whatsapp messenger is included go look at that wow and power and session this is for logging out and whatnot we also have widgets if you all the widgets that are available in the system and it comes with a ton of them cpu load monitor input panel method and whatnot so what can we say about netrunner out of the box if you like very stark, simplistic, this is not for you. It's not for you. If you want something that out of the box, you may never have to install any other software and you want to be uh, productive right out of the get-go after post-installation, Netrunner might be just what's good for you. It's based on Debian. Uh, it's based on the latest Debian, in my opinion, if my uh, information is correct. Oh, yes, Debian Buster based on Debian 10.3 Buster and it ships with the latest security updates provided by Debian so based on Debian means you have an absolutely solid core uh, in terms of reliability and stability hopefully uh, and it's just a good looking system it runs very well uh, even in a virtual machine mind you my hardware is pretty excessive but it runs quite well and there's not much I can say negative about it I mean, really, my limited experience with it has been that it has, it's one of those things that make Linux boring. What do I mean by that? I'm saying that tongue in cheek. It just works. Things work and they work well. There's no uh, scratching and climbing the walls. How do I do this? I need to install this. I need to install that. Right out of the box, Netrunner can get you up and running easily 
and very efficiently. Is it for you? I'll let you decide, but I do think it's definitely worthy of serious consideration. So that's our latest um, take on Netrunner and our latest uh, video on 10 Minutes with Linux. We hope you've enjoyed it. Please leave a thumbs up if you liked the video. Uh, please leave comments, tell other people about the channel, and we will continue with lots of other things coming up. We do have a build coming up, something I'd like to dub are the uh, build, the no-show build, or the uh, toned-down build, where we eschew things such as RGB lighting and all these other things. It's just a very simple, simple, simple build, <clears throat> but very powerful. We got that coming up. We also have other hardware um, reviews of different things and uh, we love to have you along with us and tell everybody about us take care hopefully you've enjoyed this video and uh, we'll see you soon bye